We used to think that lactic acid, the burn that you get during a workout, meant that we were failing and the muscle was failing. It turns out that the lactic acid or the lactate is actually Hey, it's us nerds that ultimately get to build the muscle. All right, if we can understand a little bit of biochemistry and we can just not be a meathead for just one second, we might be able to build a little bit more muscle. At least that's how I feel, right? I just dive into the research, dive into the biochemistry, embrace what's happening at a cellular level, learn to enjoy it, and consequently, I feel like I learned to build muscle in interesting ways. So this video is going to teach you six different ways in a nerdy fashion to build muscle. We're not talking basic stuff, we're talking very interesting, nerdy ways, so that ironically, you maybe won't be a nerd anymore, right? Okay, let's go ahead and let's dive into this. But first, please do hit that red subscribe button that's down there in the corner, and then please hit the little bell icon to turn on notifications. I know I sound like a broken record, but hitting that bell icon greatly helps this channel out, but it also makes it so that you get a notification every time I post a new video, which is every single darn day. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we need to learn is a satellite cell and what the heck it is. You see, if you talk to anyone about building muscle, they're gonna tell you that it's a pretty simple process. You break down muscle fiber and then you rebuild that muscle fiber via protein synthesis. Okay, that is kind of true. I mean, that's ultimately what is happening, but there's two ways that we build muscle via this protein synthesis process, right? Okay, so one is via what's called the mTOR pathway. Basically what that is, is stimulating the nuclei of the cell to produce more protein, ultimately create more protein, protein synthesis, okay? This is standard. This is where you have uh, what's called mTOR activation, like a switch flips and all of a sudden your body is in muscle building mode, okay? This is like a factory that creates protein. And this is great because that protein creation builds muscle. But there's another way. This is utilizing satellite cells. So rather than increasing the amount of protein that a nuclei puts out, you're creating the, uh, increasing the number of nuclei. So this activates a different process. Envision it like this. If the nuclei is the power plant that creates protein and creates muscle, then you could increase the output of that factory and make more muscle, or you could maintain the output, but just have more factories and then you're ultimately ending up with the same amount of protein synthesis. So in this video, I wanna teach you ways to activate both of those processes so you can get the maximum amount of muscle growth. And I'll tell you, satellite cells are a powerful way to build muscle. There's a study that was published in the journal Muscle and Nerve that found that when you are exercising, your muscle satellite cells are seven times more active than when at rest. That demonstrates that we need to capitalize on that satellite cell activity. So how do you do that? Well, there's an interesting study that was published in the International Journal of Stem Cells. Okay, they investigated 40 different compounds, ranging from amino acid analogs, different energy compounds, different things like that. Okay, they looked at 40 of them and they found that only 10 of those 40 compounds would activate muscle satellite cells. And out of those 10, only three were really common things that you could get your hands on that would actually be practical. And those three are caffeine anhydrous, which is typical caffeine in like a capsule form, okay? citrulline malate or L-citrulline, which is a precursor to arginine within the body, and then conjugated linoleic acid. Okay, all of these are very easy to get your hands on. Okay, so caffeine anhydrous, take a little caffeine before a workout. It has a big effect, okay? Then you have, of course, your citrulline malate. That's a precursor to arginine, which helps increase muscle cell volume and blood flow. Take that before a workout. And then conjugated linoleic acid, take a little bit of that with your bedtime meal. It's that simple, okay? That improves muscle satellite cell activity. But that's just number one. Let's move on to number two of the six nerdy ways to build muscle. Okay, this one comes down to not allocating your protein right after your workout. I guess I'm kind of going against the grain of the old school muscle building magazines that I was always just looking at, right? Okay, you don't need to consolidate your protein post-workout. Should you have protein post-workout? Yeah, it does help because you're sensitive. Your body's going to utilize it. But will it utilize more protein than it would any other time? No, not really. The Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition published something that showed that the continuous supply of protein is more important than a specific bolus at the end of a workout. Now, let me be very clear. At the end of a workout, you're insulin sensitive. So that does mean that you're going to utilize the protein that you consume better. But it doesn't mean that you're gonna utilize more protein better. So if you normally consume 30 grams of protein with each of your meals, there's no reason to consume 60 
post-workout because the extra 60 grams of protein is this going to get oxidized for energy, whether that means it gets burned or potentially stored, okay? So you're better off to have more protein spread evenly throughout your various meals throughout the day than you are to waste your money trying to allocate it. In fact, you're gonna have better results if you spread it out. Now, additionally, that same journal published something. Normally, I'm not a big fan of amino acid supplements, okay? But essential amino acids, when taken alongside protein, actually improve the usability of the protein. So they measured this with whey protein, but it's probably the case for other proteins too. You, let's say you have a protein shake. Well, if you take some essential amino acids with it, it's going to make the protein in that protein shake more usable probably because it's allowing you to not have to pull amino acids out of the protein shake just to restore nitrogen balance. Long story short, it just makes it so more protein's ultimately available. And then the Journal of Nutrition regarding protein published something that showed that if you have protein before bed, you end up having more strength increase and you end up having larger cross-sectional muscle area. So basically having a little bit of protein, not right before bed, but just as your last meal versus a placebo, ends up being more powerful. So spread your protein throughout. I will mention here too, that if you wanna check out Thrive Market down below in the description, I do have a bunch of different grocery boxes and bundles there. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. So when you're talking about like muscle building and kind of the foods that I talk about, they've got a lot of the cool options that I would recommend. So things that I might eat before bed and stuff like that. So they're an online grocery store. So that means that you can pick the kind of groceries that I would normally get at the grocery store without having to go to the grocery store. So they deliver it right to your doorstep. Super, super cool. They're a big supporter of this channel. So I really, really thank them for giving all this stuff to my fans and followers to be able to give them access to use it. So highly recommend you check them out. You can check out my various bundles there, fasting, keto, everything that you would need to really get in a healthy lifestyle. So they're down below in the description after we watch the rest of this video. The next thing that you wanna do is kind of an obvious one more compound movements, more multi-joint movements. Okay, so more shoulder presses, more squats, more deadlifts. Do things that aren't gonna injure you, but the purpose of this is simple. You're going to have a greater hormonal response. The Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise demonstrated that, well, if you're doing a squat or you're doing a deadlift, you have a dramatically larger increase in your testosterone production and your growth hormone production after a workout. Okay, and the cool thing is, is you don't need to boost your testosterone after a workout because studies have shown that women actually end up having larger bouts of muscle growth after a workout, even with lower levels of testosterone. So don't let the testosterone thing fool you. It's more about the growth hormone in this particular case. Not gonna spend a lot of time in the exercise world. I wanna go back to biochemistry here. Number four is going to be embracing lactic acid. We used to think that lactic acid, the burn that you get during a workout, meant that we were failing and the muscle was failing. It turns out that the lactic acid or the lactate is actually buffering some of the actual burn. Okay, the burn, I'm gonna get technical, is coming from more of the hydrogen and the inorganic phosphate that is a byproduct of creating energy in the muscle. The lactic acid eh, sort of serves as a buffer, but it's more of an adaptive response. So that burn that you're getting is your body communicating to your brain that it needs to get stronger and it needs to adapt. So that lactate is actually a good thing. Okay, not gonna go down the BFR rabbit hole, but I have become a relatively recent fan of using blood flow restriction training methods to actually trap more of the lactate, the lactic acid, so that it can do its job better. Okay, because that is definitely a signaling device. The lactate serves as a signaling device that says, hey brain, there's some stuff going on here, make this muscle stronger. Really, really cool stuff. I have other videos that break that down in more depth. Number five is a really interesting one. Utilize more vitamin D. Okay, remember how I talked about the two pathways, how we have satellite cell activation to grow muscle, or we have mTOR activation to output more protein from the nuclei? Well, vitamin D sensitizes that mTOR pathway. It makes it so that mTOR gets triggered easier, and so that, that nuclei produces protein easier. It needs less stimulus. That's a very good thing because we want these acute spikes of mTOR. We want them controlled and we want them when we want them. In the world of building muscle, we look at mTOR and we measure it via what is called phosphorylation. In studies, vitamin D3 has shown to improve what is called the phosphorylation of various mTOR pathways, like P70S6K if you're a science nerd like I am, okay? So what that means is that vitamin D is making it so that these pathways to building muscle 
are easier to turn on or easier to open. Long story short, it's amplifying the response of your workout and amplifying the response of the protein rich foods that you're eating. Okay, and the last one I wanna talk about is really cutting edge stuff, okay? And it's all kind of new science, but we're starting to piece it together. That is the world of your gut. Taking a probiotic or eating probiotic rich foods is proving to be pretty powerful when it comes to building muscle. There's a study that was published in the journal Science of Translational Medicine. Okay, it took a look at germ-free mice. I know mice, but hear me out. Okay, germ-free mice are mice that have their microbiome removed. And they noticed that their muscle was poor poor quality muscle and they had a lot of atrophy and they weren't having the hormone signaling with the muscle that would normally occur. Well, turns out when they put a microbiome back in these mice, suddenly the atrophy stopped and they started to build muscle and their muscle structure was better. And then furthermore, mice that they added probiotics to the mix, well, they ended up having an even more enhanced effect, even better muscle structure and even more signaling. Wow, who would have thought that your gut biome played a role in your muscle structure? I guess it is the ultimate root of our health in a lot of ways, but let's look at another study. Another study utilizing a lab form of probiotic known as BC30 demonstrated that when BC30 or this particular probiotic was added into the mix, it improved the absorption of two very, very important aminos that we've already talked about in this video. One, citrulline, and the other is leucine. Now, let me wrap this in a nice little bundle, put a bow on it for you. Okay, citrulline is the amino that's going to absorb and going to improve satellite cell activity. It's gonna improve muscle growth that way. Leucine is the amino acid that gets absorbed and is going to improve the mTOR activation for muscle growth. So improving the absorption of these aminos via probiotics means that you are covering both ways that you can potentially build muscle. We want absorption of more of these aminos so that we can utilize them. It just so happens that it improves the absorption of the two different aminos that go in the complete two different directions for building muscle, covering all of our bases. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and you buy a bunch of probiotics. That's not what I'm even saying at all. The point is, adding those fermented foods, adding the foods that are short chain fatty acids, adding the things like butyric acid from ghee and butter and things like that can actually have a very powerful effect. And I hate to sound totally cliche, but your veggies are probably gonna help you build muscle because they get converted into short chain fatty acids that feed the cells within our gut, that help the gut biome, that ultimately allow this all to happen. So I know that some people have negative things to say about loading up on veggies, but heck, it works for me and I seem to hold on to my muscle pretty well. Anyhow. Keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.